What is going on, everybody? We're back. We are back once again, chronicling the new games that we've added to the collection. Back with some more pickups. And uh, it's been a couple months since the last one. So, of course, we are adding quite a bit of new shit. And on top of that, we just recently went to the Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo, picked up some stuff, and it was a lot of fun. And dude, it's like a fairly new expo. And every year it's like growing and growing and growing. So this year, it was actually pretty damn busy and it was pretty big. So it's really cool to see. Um, but let's just dive right into it, dude. We got some, we got some PS4 stuff, some PS3 stuff, PlayStation 2, N64, Super Nintendo. Um, but let's start it off with one of these. I picked this up like a few months ago. I feel like a couple of videos have gone by and I just keep forgetting to show it. Um, but this is the, uh, the official Sega Saturn retro bit controller, wireless controller. Um, and it is awesome. The Sega Saturn, such a fantastic controller, dude. And this one's wireless and it comes with a couple dongles that you can use in your Sega Saturn, like your original hardware. And you can also use it on PC, which is awesome um, because it is a very solid controller, really good deep head. It's great for side scrolling, like platforming games, really good for fighting games. You get the six face buttons. So it's really good for like Street Fighter and stuff like that. Uh, awesome controller. Plus I only had one Sega Saturn controller. Um, so it's like, look, if I'm gonna buy another one. May as well buy a fancy wireless one. Um, Plus, I don't think these are in production anymore, and this is like officially licensed by Sega um, from Retrobit, so pretty cool. Next, I was over, uh, I was browsing over at EB Games with uh, my pal Beirudi, and uh, he grabbed this off the shelf. He's like, oh, Rital, you should buy this. <laughs> this is Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise, and uh, this is like a, it's obviously based off of the anime and the manga and all that stuff. And uh, it's like a action beat em up RPG, post-apocalyptic, very cool. I haven't even tried it out yet. As much as I, I give Bear a hard time for making me buy it, it does look super cool. And it looks like it's something that's right up my alley. So uh, we'll eventually check that out. Next, it was goddamn, it was goddamn Amazon Prime Day, Jeff Bezos, you bastard. I bought one game. And it's a game that I've already played. It's just, I, I just wanted the physical copy because I'm a goddamn weirdo. That's Dark Souls Remastered. It was like half off. It was super cheap. So I just picked up Dark Souls Remastered on the old PlayStation 4. Could play it on the PS5. Try to get the trophies. You know, I'm one of those. Sucker for the trophies. Um, because I played it on PC. We played it on the channel a long time ago, right? And I played like the, just the original PC version with all like the mods to make the game actually work. Um, so the remastered is probably like the best way to play it, to be honest. Okay, I ordered this on eBay. Um, this is a game that I've been wanting for a little while. It's such a great series, dude. That's Twisted Metal Black. Probably the best Twisted Metal, right? It's like, I really like the PS3 one, but there's just something about Twisted Metal Black because it plays exactly like the PS1 counterparts, whereas like the PS3 ones, like, really is its own thing. Whereas this is just like pure twisted metal goodness. And it's like, it's a really dark game. It's really fucked up. Some of like the cutscenes I could totally see probably like scaring some kids or some shit. But that's Twisted Metal Black. Such a good game, dude. Okay, next. We are already on to the convention pickups. The retro, the Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo pickups. Now look. I picked up some really like good stuff there and then I picked up some stuff that was just cheap. <laughs> Look, they had a table there where everything was $5 and then like within the last half of the day, everything was $2. Everything on this gigantic table was two bucks, dude. So I'm just like, all right, you know what? We're gonna go in on this table and uh, we sure did. So let's start it off. I picked up a bunch of PS2 games. So these were picked up at two to five dollars each. Um, we got Grand Theft Auto Vice City. And surprisingly, I didn't have a copy of this. Back in the day when this first came out, I'm pretty sure I played it on my Xbox. But uh, I don't know what happened to that copy. So I was like, look, I don't have a physical copy. Let's get Vice City. 
probably my favorite PS2 Grand Theft Auto. San Andreas is really good as well, but you gotta love the, the 80s Miami kind of vibe this game has. It's awesome. The soundtrack, my goodness. Next. Oh boy. This is a stinker. Do it. This is not a great game, but I remember playing this and renting this when I was a kid. And like, for some reason, I got really into it. And it's got like a versus mode. It's just a crazy, stupid ass action game. That's Enter the Goddamn Matrix. This game is ridiculous. Third person action game. You can do crazy fight moves, crazy action, gunfight sequences. It's, it's like a guilty pleasure. I remember loving this game even though it's objectively not a great game. <laughs> Next, Onimusha for the PlayStation 2. Capcom Samurai action game. It's funny, this game has like pre-rendered backgrounds, like it's goddamn Resident Evil or something. It's a little weird to like go back and play today, um, but still a solid game. The Onimusha series, man, Capcom still is just, they're just sitting on it. Nothing's happening with Onimusha, dude. Okay, next. I actually already have an Xbox copy of this game, and we've actually already played it through in its entirety on the channel. But it's such a good game, and such a cult classic in my opinion, that is... PsyOps. The Mind Gate Conspiracy. And look, this was on, again, this was on like the cheap, the cheap table. A physical copy of this game is like 20 bucks, so I'm just like, oh. PsyOps for PS2? Hell yeah, I'm all about it. I love this game. Classic Midway title. Again, the streak continues where we're always adding a Midway game <laughs> in every pickups video. And uh, I love PsyOps. Such a good game. I think when we played it through on the channel, because it's a Midway game, there was like a code where you can play through the game as Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. And that's how we played the game. That was just like last year or something like that. And it was a great time. Uh, next. A game that I owned at one point, and then who the fuck knows what happened to my copy, so I'm just like, alright, it's on the clearance table, let's just pick it up, re-add it to the collection, that's the original God of War. Um, so now I have one and two, both PS2 entries. Uh, such a good game. These games actually still hold up, and I have this weird, I have this weird itch to go back and play some, like, PS2 era God of War. Or even the PSP ones. PSP ones are really, really good. So, maybe we'll do that at some point on the channel. God of War. Next! As I'm just chucking shit aside here. Um, such a good series. A dead series. This is SSX on the PS2. And so, this big, like, table of, like, clearance games that they had, right? Where everything was $2 later in the day, 5 bucks. There's lots of, like, duplicates, right? There was, like, a lot of sports games, there was a lot of racing games, there was a lot of, like, duplicates of, like, really, really common titles. But this was, like, the only SSX that I saw on the entire table. And, uh, again, can't go wrong for five bucks. I love this series, and I don't have the first one, so that is SSX. Last PS2 game, Midnight Club 2, which <laughs> might just be the best Midnight Club game, and I, uh, pop this in captured some footage and dude it's still so fun very addictive just like racing rivals and you take their ride after you've beaten them and it's just i don't know there's like an addictive gameplay loop about it rockstar back when they made other games <laughs> you know what i mean midnight club such an underrated series so good dude okay moving on here so those were all of the ps2 games that we picked up at the vancouver retro gaming expo next um on that same cheapo table, there was a bunch of PS3 games, so please believe we stocked up. The PS3, man, it was just such a, it was such a fun console generation. So much weird stuff on it, there's a lot of experimental stuff on it. Um, really, really fun generation, arguably one of my favorites. We got... <sighs> okay, there was like 500 copies of this game on that clearance table, <laughs> this is Warhawk for the PS3 which I actually don't have a copy of this game, and this is like a Sony-exclusive first-party Sony game. And uh, we already have a copy of Starhawk, which is like a sequel to Warhawk, and it's actually not a terrible series. You know what's funny? The servers for this game are, are offline now, but there was like... 
There's like these fan servers that are hosted that are really easy to connect to. I think it's called PS1, PlayStation Online Network Emulation or something like that. Terrible name, first of all, but they're basically like fan servers that you can connect and still play these games that are no longer online. So there's still people online playing shit like Warhawk and even Twisted Metal Black, which I just showed. There's still fan hosted servers which is super, super cool. Next, we got, again, this was just like a weird one. Super cheap, we picked up Time Shift on a PS3. I haven't even tested this yet. Haven't even captured any footage for it, so I don't have a whole lot to say about it. Dude, just this era, I feel like everyone was making like a first person shooter. Everyone was trying to get a slice of that goddamn Halo Call of Duty money, right? And this is published by Sierra, Jesus Christ. And I think it was made by, damn, Saber Interactive, who are still around. Um, okay, that's like a legit studio. So that's pretty cool. That's Time Shift. Um, Saber Interactive, they actually just made that Evil Dead video game that we just played on the channel like a month or so ago. So that's pretty cool. Next, there's again, there's a lot of weird ideas around this time. This is a game called Fracture. This is like a third person shooter. And this is made by goddamn LucasArts. Holy shit, or is at least published by them. Um, I don't recognize the Day One Studios who actually developed it, but that's Fracture. You have like some sort of tool or something that lets you adjust and like reshape terrain and like a third person shooter. It's pretty cool, pretty neat, a lot of gimmicks. Um, haven't tried that one out yet either. Next, again, dude. The fucking clearance table, we hit that shit hard. This is, this is the only copy of the game that I saw on the table, otherwise I would have picked a one in better shape. This is Black Sight Area 51, fucking Midway game. Um, this is like a first person shooter, obviously in the, uh, the Area 51 universe, the cinematic universe of Area 51. So you're fighting like aliens and stuff like that. I was hoping, I haven't tried this out yet, I'm hoping it's got like some horror elements, right? Because it's about aliens and shit. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> Next! Okay, so on the PS3 table, man. The, first of all, on this clearance table, there is tons of people crowded around. Everyone is looking for those, you know, those secret like hidden gems. The diamonds in the rough amongst all of the trash. And I found a couple games that, uh, it's pretty happy about. Do a shout outs to my my pal Beirudi. He found a copy of Ultra Street Fighter 4 on there for PS3. And I'm just like, what? It's just a copy of Street Fighter 4. Who gives a shit? But apparently, the physical copy of Ultra Street Fighter 4 on PS3, because that has all the DLC and everything and all that bullshit on the disc, goes for like 50 bucks. So I didn't even know. So shout outs. That was a pretty sweet find. Um we got this game is picked up in popularity quite a bit recently and i've actually never owned a copy and that is metal gear rising how fucking sick is that dude and it's actually a really clean copy complete got all the shits and uh i really want to play this man such a fucking cool game because i've always liked raiden Raiden, you know, a little bit divisive of a character, right? Especially when he came out in uh, Metal Gear Solid 2. But he was really cool in 4, and then this is obviously Platinum just taking Raiden and just going crazy and making an insane game, which just sounds right up my alley, so I need to check that out. And then, speaking of Platinum, okay, I saw a couple copies of this game there, and uh, this is a game that's just, I guess, Nobody ever talks about it, it's just gone under the radar. This is a game called Anarchy Reigns. And I didn't really know what to expect from this game when I picked it up. But I've seen it around, I know it was made by Platinum, published by Sega. It also takes place in the Mad World universe, right? Uh, which was a Wii exclusive game. And so I popped it in, and I played it, and I tried it, and I fucking fell in love. This game is such an underrated gem. Anarchy goddamn reigns, dude. Because you gotta understand, really what this is, is it's a fighting game. Yes, it has a single player campaign that 
you know, I guess they felt obligated to add to it, but really, it's a fighting game, a la Power Stone or something like that. It's like a 3D arena fighting game. You can go 1v1, you can go 2v2, free-for-all four-player. It's got this crazy battle royale mode, and it controls awesome. It's, you got meter management, grabs, blocks. It's insane. Cool combos and juggles. This game is such a fucking gem, and I can't believe I've put it off for so long to finally like trying it and giving it a shot because this is a Rattel game through and through. Anarchy Reigns is fucking dope. It's so cool, dude. It's so sick. And uh, the servers are still online. I doubt there's anyone who still plays it. <laughs> but I feel bad that this game is just... Again, it was on the goddamn clearance table and there was several copies of Anarchy Reigns. And uh, I feel like maybe one day people will catch on and realize that, yo, this game is dope. This game is awesome. And I just never got the love and the credit that it deserved. But anyways, anarchy reigns, everybody. So good. Okay, we're moving on to some some older stuff, some Super Nintendo and N64 games. Not a whole lot. Um, this actually, this first one, I forgot to include in my last video. And you can actually see it. I think when we cut to the Turok on the CRT footage, you actually see it inside the Super Nintendo. And I just forgot to show it, but this is Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 on the Super Nintendo. Dude, UMK3, such a good game. Definitely my favorite of the classic Mortal Kombats. I guess this in Trilogy, um, but dude, it's so fucking good. The best way to play, like there's, there's the original Mortal Kombat 3 on Super Nintendo, but you gotta get the Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 because that's got Scorpion and all the new characters and shit like that. The returning characters. <laughs> Okay, finishing off the expo pickups. Now the cool thing about the expo is you're there, you're talking to the vendors face to face. So you could barter and haggle a little bit. Obviously, you gotta do it within reason, right? Don't be a douche. Um, especially, you know, usually most vendors will cut you a deal if you're picking up multiple items. So that's exactly what we did. So these last three items, um, I all got from the same vendor and he cut me a sick deal. Sick deal we got for the Super Nintendo. Alien versus Predator. Now, not to be confused with the classic arcade game Alien versus Predator, which is an amazing Capcom beat 'em up. This is not that. This is made by Activision. It is a beat 'em up. You're playing as Predator, right? But it's it's quite a bit more stiff and jank, and it's not nearly as good as that arcade game. But it's still. A pretty fun, very serviceable beat em up, and I got it at such a good price um, that I just had to pick it up. That's Alien vs. Predator for the Super Nintendo. Next, we got two more. These are both N64 games. Again, the N64 collection. It's getting there, dude. It's getting there, and there's a few. There's there there's a handful of games that I still want, but these were some couple big ones that I can cross off the list that I have wanted. We got Gauntlet Legends. Such a good game, dude. I love Gauntlet Legends and Gauntlet Dark Legacy. Such fun games, really good co-op games. The N64 version is actually not a bad version at all. When I popped this in to capture some footage, I was expecting the frame rate to be ass and the picture quality to be terrible. But it actually wasn't that bad. Um, actually a really, really good way to play this is Gauntlet Legends, and it's it's definitely getting up there in price. If you could find a copy of Gauntlet Legends for less than 50 bucks, pick it up, dude. Pick that shit up. Next, last game. And I think this pretty much completes my, my collection of this series. I might need the GBA game still, but this is F-Zero X, dude. F-Zero X. F-Zero, when it came out on the Super Nintendo, great game great game right but obviously it's on the goddamn super nintendo i feel like the series really found its identity really found that sense of speed with the n64 version i feel like you know all of the versions that you see in like smash brothers of captain falcon and all that kind of stuff that all really comes from the n64 version even the music right the music for f-zero is so iconic and so classic 
but like all those like metal renditions of those songs and stuff like that, again, really started in F-Zero X. Probably the best soundtrack out of any of the F-Zero games. Um, obviously GX is really, really good on the GameCube, but goddamn, F-Zero X on the N64 still holds up, still amazing to play. Looks really good. The sense of speed is there. The fucking music. The artwork. I love like the character designs, dude. And like the people you actually race as. They're just wild looking, you know? So many crazy characters. Like obviously there's Captain Falcon, but then you got like all these like robots. You got dinosaurs. You got the grim goddamn Reaper. I just love that they get crazy with it. Such a good series, dude. I love the F-Zero series. So super happy to add that to the collection. And everybody, that's it for this one. We'll be back. We gotta stop spending so much money on retro games, but you know me, we'll probably be back soon. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Peace.